Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He is all we have, brothers and sisters. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, what to go? Show me the way.
Pastor Freddie. Uh, unfortunately, right at this time, we cannot have children's church. Uh, they've asked us not to take all the kids inside, but uh, we'll work on that, see what we can do, see if we can get that started. Possibly for four weeks is what President Ness says we have to meet outside. So we can pray it shorter. We can pray next week, he'll put something out and say we can go inside and have services. So we want to know you're out there. Wave your hands, honk your horns, flash your lights, let us know you're here. Enjoying the presence of God. The rules are you have to stay in your car unless you have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> we do have our bathrooms open. If you need to, you go in this side and you come out this side. You'll be handed a, a handy wipe towel to, so you wipe the bathroom door when you go in, when you come out. There's a trash can here that you can drop it in the trash. <clears throat> one person at a time. If you have children with you, one adult and one child, 13 and under. You have to come in with them. You can't send them in by themselves. Offering baskets will be brought around to you. I know some of you already sent your tithe envelopes in, but when he gets done, they will go around with the offering baskets and let you put your offering in there. And at the end of the service, if you need prayer, raise your hand and Pastor Freddie's going to pray for you. Just stick your hand out the window and Pastor Freddie will pray for those that need prayer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Pastor Freddie, are you ready? I'm ready. Amen. Am I ready? I am ready. I've been waiting for weeks. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I am ready, Freddy. All right. Praise the Lord. Where's my Bible? Praise the Lord. If you're watching this on Facebook, let me move this camera up here a little bit where you can see my face. There we go. Uh, so we're doing a service outside. The tribe just now released the uh, restrictions where we can have an outside service, but we can't go inside yet. So we're doing what we can do. Amen. And it's good, kind of fun actually. I'm kind of enjoy I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying it better next week when we I have some shade. I'm getting. I'm out here in the sun. I'm going to turn red. And then I'm going to turn brown, and next week I'm going to be browner than you. <laughs> All right. Praise the Lord. How many brought your Bible? Honk your horn. All right. All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. I need somebody to document this day for us. If you got your phone and your camera, well... Somebody shoot some pictures and then send them to me after we're done. And so, uh, it's been a long time since I preached outside. I've, I've done street services in the years past, tent meetings, all kinds of things. But uh, we used to do an outreach like this. Down, anybody remember those days when we had services at Najoni Park during the fair? Anybody that was there still around? Those were the days. And so, uh, 
We're open your Bible this morning to the book of Psalms, chapter 91. I want to share with you uh, some things from the Word of God, and uh, I think it will encourage you today. The, uh, this, this psalm is about our safety. Where do you go when you need to be safe? Where do you go when you're afraid? Where do you go when there's a risk and you're, uh, you or your family are in danger? Well, we tried staying in our houses and that didn't work. The, the virus spread faster than ever. We tried to uh, wear gloves and masks, uh, which uh, I haven't seen any evidence that that's helped anybody. Probably is still a good idea, but that's not the the uh, you know the the answer to everybody's problem. You know, there's one answer to all of this, and that is your faith in God. Shelter in Him. God is your only refuge. He's the only protection. I tell you what, the name of Jesus, speak the name over of Jesus yeah. over you, and it'll protect you better than a handy wipe or a sanitary gel. But the word of God has not been locked in. But in your mind, you know where you know how to stand uh, on faith. We've had so much ministry going on uh, without my leading. Uh, I, uh, I was locked up, but the word of God and the anointing is never locked up. Praise the Lord. And then, just a couple testimonies. Bro, Brother Frank, where's Frank? Wait, Frank, way out there taking my picture. Hello, everybody knows Frank. Frank was sharing with me the other day that uh, he, he told his family, we can't go to church uh, anywhere. There's no church to go to right now. But he said, we can have our own church right here at our house. Uh, so they did. He called his family all in. They all, even people that don't go to church, people that don't come here to church. And he had one, uh, I think it was a brother or brother-in-law that wouldn't even come out in the living room, but he stayed in his bedroom and listened. <laughs> that works. And they had some miraculous healings. One healed from, uh, from coronavirus, and God answered their prayers. And I tell you, that's awesome. Brother Jim, wave your hand. Everybody knows Jim over here. Brother Jim has two sisters that didn't know the Lord. They were frightened, they were scared, and they were worried about themselves and the, the virus. Uh, they didn't know Jesus as their Savior. Uh, Jim prayed with each one of them, and they confessed Jesus Christ as their Savior. They got saved. Praise God. Uh, not only that, but he's been having Bible studies with them and making disciples out of them. That's what the Word of God says to do. I don't know if you're aware of this testimony. R Rowena Lewis posted this on her Facebook page uh, that, you know, she's a RN and she works at the hospital. And we have a number of people from our church up there at the hospital to work their employees up there. There's some other Christians that are up there. Uh, some of the nurses, they just decided, the pastors, we can't get in. It's on, the hospital's been on lockdown for weeks, so and we can't go pray for anybody. Our intercessors can't get in to pray for anybody. But, but God always has people on the inside. Amen. 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 Those nurses, Rowena, and some of the nurses, they got together, and they started walking up and down the halls of, of the hospital praying over and casting the devil and taking authority over coronavirus and, and laying hands on the doors and praying with patience. And I tell you that God has really been answering prayer up there. And then the hospital administration divided them up and sent them into different wards. And that just spread the fire. Different ones, went, one went this way and one went that way and one went that way. And, and it's, it's revival time up there. Thank God that people have been trained in the Word of God. People know God. People know how to pray in this congregation. And we know that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Amen. So I want to uh, uh, share with you uh, if you got your Bible, open it up to the book of Psalms. Psalms chapter 90, we're going to be in verse 90 and uh, chapter 90 and 91. But Psalms 100, or Psalms 90, verse 1, this is a prayer. Uh, the Bible calls it the prayer of Moses, the man of God. 
And he said, Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. I want to uh, uh, focus on the first line, Lord, you have been our dwelling place. I want you to, we're going to talk about several, they're called uh, uh, metaphors. That's when you have something that er that's earthly and physical that we can use it to illustrate something that's in the unseen, the spiritual. So we're going to talk about God uh, as, as your house of protection. God is, a, think of God as a house. You go inside the house and you're safe. You go inside, inside, and you're comfortable. You go inside, that's where all your needs are met, inside. And, and so I want you to think of God as, as the, the, the uh, God, the house. He said, Moses said, you are the dwelling place. Ever since before the creation of the world, we, we go into Jesus. We go into Jesus and he's the protector. He protects us from the storm. He protects us from virus. He, in fact, he protects us from sickness and disease. Now fast forward to Psalm the next chapter, verse 1. It says, he who dwells in that shelter, the person who lives in that shelter, of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I want you to look at the R word there, rest. The Lord is, we, we go, your house is a place of rest. And you, it's a place where you get comfortable, you can kick back. Uh, and it, it's a place of rest, and me, physical rest, mental rest, spiritual rest. It's a place where you're not worried about things as much. You know that is your safe zone. That's your safe place. <coughs> so God is saying that, that the person who lives in that shelter or in, in Jesus, he will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Rest in his shadow. Just like your, the, the sun, this hot sun is not shining in your house. You got the air conditioner on. You're in the shade. Everything is cool. Uh, and you're not stressed out. When you're in Jesus, and some of us still have to learn this, that in Jesus is a place of safety. It's a place of relaxation. It's a place of rest. I'm looking for my water. What did I do with it? Here it is. The, uh, so I want you to just to make a decision today with me that you are going to make decide to quit living under the stress and if you listen to the news and it gets you all uptight, turn the news off and get the word out. Put some gospel music on. Amen. Bring Marilyn over house. She'll sing for you. <laughs> well, uh, I want you to just be, uh, make Jesus your home. Make Jesus the place where you live and it is a place of rest. And and then in verse 3, fast forward, verse 3, it says, Surely he will, if you're in Jesus, you're in that safe place called Jesus, he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. Uh, I want to save time, so I'm going to skip from the first line to the last line in that verse. Read it like this. Surely he, meaning God, your house, will save you from the deadly pestilence pestilence. Somebody say coronavirus. Here's a promise from God's word and if you live in him, he will save you from the pestilence, from, from that curse of, of a virus. There's no virus <coughs> that can come against the name of Jesus. There's no virus. There's no virus that can kill your family. And the and best of all, the Bible says in another place that if they do kill you, that's the worst they can do. It, it, I, I sometimes I envy people that are gone on with the Lord. I'm, my, I'm amazed at how many posts I've seen on Facebook of pastors. We have one pastor, Walters, and his wife and his son uh, here, pastor at the Baptist Church uh, in the south side of town. All three of them went. We had 
other pastors that have gone across the reservation. But you know what? We have one pastor named Ray Yazi at Tonalia, Arizona, who was one of the first ones to have it. And guess what? He got healed, and he's home, and he's well. Praise God. So what the, Paul said, whether I die, it's okay. And I think I'd rather die, he said, but for you guys, you still need my preaching. And I think so I need to stay here for a while. Let me tell you, either way, you're a winner. But I'll tell you what, you're not going to leave this world till God says it's okay. God, if God's got work for you, God's got a plan for you. You're not over with. You're here. And so he said, I want you to live in that house of God. Uh, don't live in fear. Don't live in panic. Don't live in terror. Live in rest. Rest to your spirit. Rest to your soul. Rest. And uh, get your, put your mind at ease. Put your heart at ease. You know, your fear is contagious. If you're afraid, your children are going to be afraid. If you're afraid, your elderly people are going to be afraid. Unless they're like me. I don't let people scare me. I'm elderly, but we don't have to be afraid either. Is that right, Lou? Yeah. Amen. Because he, because he will save you from the deadly pestilence. Fast forward. Now go to verse 4. He who dwells, we're still in verse 1. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High, in verse 4, he says, if you're in that shelter, in that house called Jesus, he will cover you with his feathers. Under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield. This is another metaphor. We're moving on now from the metaphor of the house to the metaphor of a chicken. <laughs> I bet you never thought about Jesus as being a mother hen before. But he uses this uh, metaphor uh, like, like a, a bird, a mother bird. The, that uh, uh, if you ever watch, uh, watch a hen that sets on her eggs, nobody ever sees eggs come from city market. <laughs> but they don't really come from city market, they come from a chicken. A chicken is a bird. And I grew up on the farm, and we had hens that, that laid her eggs, and she sat on those, it's called setting them. She sits there, and she covers them with her body heat on them until they hatch out. And then they have all these little family of little yellow chicklets that run around, and mother chicken, she's running around, and she's teaching them how to scratch in the ground and find bugs and worms to feed on. But if there's a danger that come by, if there's a hawk flies overhead, or there's a dog or a cat come into her uh, area where her babies are, boy, she goes into mama mode, boy. She, she raises her feathers up, she raises her wings up, and she gets at me, look in her eyes, and she says, you're not going to come, you're not going to touch my family because I am their mom. I'm the mother hen. And she'll, she'll drive off a hawk. She'll drive off uh, a cat or, or a small dog. She can do it because she's, she's that. God says, I want you to see, Jesus said, I want you to see me like that. I want you to see me as your mother hen. If the devil's coming to get you with a disease, if the devil's coming to get your mind with fear, if the devil's coming to get you and, and you're, you're getting into a panic mode and a, having a panic attack, let me tell you something. I want you to understand that you have a Father God and, and His Son Jesus and the Holy Spirit. They are watching over you. And boy, I'll tell you, if the devil comes after you, he will ruffle their feathers up. And he will, and, the, and he will drive. He will protect you from them. And those little chicklets, they know when the when Mama says there's danger, danger, danger. They run under her, and she spreads her wings out and and protects them. Just a story. Uh, I heard this testimony from a man, an old farmer, uh, uh, lived out in the plains, the west plains, the plains of west uh, western Kansas. Back in the early, earlier days when farmers had to uh, live in sod huts and they they'd scratch out a living out in a prairie, 
the, the, the danger of living out there then and, it, and to some extent now you know, are grass fires, huge fires. We have forest fires here, but they don't have a forest. They have grass. Sometimes the grass is you know, several feet high. But once a fire would start in the, in the dry grass, it could sweep across it and kill everything in, in its path. So a prairie fire came across uh, the plains and the family hunkered down in their, 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 uh, their earth a hut called a dugout. They lived in there and the fire went over them and they were safe. And after the fire was over, they went out just walking around and seeing how much damage was done to their farm. And as the farmer was off walking out there, he saw a black clump. He couldn't tell what it was, just a clump of something right there. And he didn't know for sure what it was. So he kicked it with his foot and he rolled over and it was a chicken. She got she burned to death in the fire. Her feathers were gone. She was dead. But you know what? When he kicked that, what he found out was that dead chicken. Underneath that mo dead mother hen was all of her babies and they were still alive. She, she, she put herself over her babies. The fire came over. She gave her life for her babies. And they lived. Let me tell you something. That's the picture of Psalms 91. He said, I will cover you with my feathers. Whenever the fire comes, whenever danger comes, whatever's coming your way, I want you to just run under Jesus and cover him. And he will cover you. And that protection is from virus. That protection is from persecution. That, that cover is for anything that the devil will throw against you. Somebody shout amen. Amen. So, he said, if you live in the house called Jesus, he will cover you like a mother hen covers her little chickens. Amen. Now, so I want you to just to see this. Now look at verse 6. Verse, verse 5 says, you will not fear the terror. You know, fear is a decision you make. Yes, it's an emotion, but you have control over your emotions because you're a child of God. You speak the name of Jesus against fear. Fear will come on you. It, it will cause all kinds of mental pictures come in your mind. It'll, uh, it'll come. But let me tell you something. You decide to be afraid or you decide not to be afraid. In the name of Jesus, I will not fear the Bible says, fear not. It's your choice. It's your decision whether, whether to have fear or not. And I'm, I'm, I have a lot more to say, but I want to just kind of finish with this. What you say is so powerful. We're, we call ourselves a faith church. We live by faith. The one place the Bible says, if you don't live by faith, you're not going to live at all very long. We live by faith, and faith people talk a faith language. A, a faith language says, I can do all things through Christ. Faith language says, the enemy cannot come against my house or my family. The faith language says, we will live and not die. The faith language... The faith language says, I build a shield of faith around my house, a devil and virus, you cannot come past that front door. Because this is a residence where Jesus lives. This is a God house. This is a Jesus house. A devil, you have no place here. Mark 11, 23 says, you have what you say. So I want you to change the way you're talking. You're on, you listen to the news and they said there's going to be all oh, the COVID virus is going to, going to wave, a big wave is going to come like a forest fire. It's going to come again. I want you to start talking to that forest fire. Uh, I'm talking to that wave, that COVID wave, and say you will not come near my house. When you're around people, it says, oh, it's going to get bad. 
You can say, well, why we're already been bad. Now we're good. We're the healer. We live by faith. We have a shield of faith. We have protection because we live in the house of the Lord. Praise God. I want you to see yourself every time fear starts coming into your mind and somebody else say something scary. Let somebody that you got know got exposed to virus and so you're exposed. Don't accept that. Faith people don't sit down and take it sitting down. No, you rise up in your spirit and you start talking to that COVID. You're not going to get me COVID. I refuse to be sick. <laughs> I refuse to let COVID, as a parent, I refuse to let it come over my home. And devil, if you do get in here, I'll cast you out because I have power to tread on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy. Praise the Lord. So I want you to do that, make that decision. I believe that's why God brought you to this service today. You needed to hear this word. You needed to be reminded who you are and where you live. Who you are is a child of God. Where you live is in a house called Jesus. And he will cover you like a hen. That chicken died for her babies. Guess who died for you? Jesus already died. And by his stripes we are healed. 1 Peter 2.24. Praise the Lord. We're going to pray now. And, and if you have fear you've been battling the fear i want you we're, we're going to pray with you right now if you're worried that you've got sickness you've got important to somebody you love has been tested positive listen to me just because somebody tests positive doesn't mean they're dead yet they're still breathing they're still alive whether there's life there's hope so I, we're going to pray. And then after we pray this prayer, I want to pray again for, for whatever need you are. If we were in the church right there, this is when we would call you up and say we have prayer warriors to lay hands on you. We can't do that today because of the restrictions. They're going to be praying with me. But uh, after we pray this prayer, we're going to pray another prayer. And I'm going to have you, if you've got a need, just raise your hand outside your window, right side, driver's side, the other side. Just wave it if you've got a need, and the intercessors are going to join me. They're not going to come to you, but we're going to connect with you with faith in our heart. And you come against spirits of fear. I thank you that God has not given us a spirit of fear. Of the enemy. And Father, we just apologize and repent for our negative tongues. We have said negative things. We have spoken negative words. We have, sp we have spoken doubt and fear and unbelief, Father. We repent of that. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we just release a spirit of faith to sweep over every, ch every car. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke words of fear that have been spoken over us. Words of fear that, that, and doubt and unbelief that is spoken about us and to us. In the name of Jesus, I say in the name that's above every name. Fear, you have no place. And I drive out fear. Perfect love casts out fear, drives out fear. So our love for God is a perfect love. We love the Lord. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just say in that name of Jesus, fear, I rebuke you, I bind you, and I drive you out of this congregation in Jesus' name. Now somebody say amen if you prayed that prayer with me. All right. Praise the Lord. If you're watching this on Facebook, all those horns are remote amens. <laughs> all right. Now we're going to pray for your specific needs. I don't have to hear your need. All right. I have to hear what it is, but I want you to there where you're saying that God is listening. I want you to just, just speak it up, whatever it is. If you have COVID, say it. 
in the name of Jesus. If you have uh, another ailment, if you have COPD, you have asthma, you have, uh, I don't care whatever you got, in the name of Jesus, God is listening. The Bible says that, that, that we need to tell God our sin, our, call our sickness, and, and then pray for that you can be healed. So if you've, got, if you've got a sickness or another need that you're needed healing, I want you to just, uh, just stand up. Uh, or no, don't stand up. Raise your hand up. Stick your hand out the window so we'll know, we'll know where the need is. Here, here's one here. There's two here. Three, four, uh, four, five, six, all over this place. Amen. Intercessors, there you see those hands. Just start praying for them. In the name of, put your faith with their faith, with my faith, and God is going to hear. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come in the name of Jesus against a, a sickness and disease. In the name of Jesus, and by faith, we lay our hands on every one of these people. If you're watching on, on Facebook, in the name of Jesus, I release the, the, the prayer of faith over you, and I declare healing come into your body. I declare healing coming into the body of your loved one. The, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we, are, we refuse to be afraid, but we decide to live by faith and the faith of God. The prayer of the righteous is effectual and, and effective. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you've given us power over all things. Lord, I just speak healing in every one of these, Lord, that need healing. People that are discouraged and depressed in the name of Jesus, I come against depression. In the name of Jesus, Father, we say that Jesus is Lord over every situation and in every car and in every home. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Now praise the Lord for what he's done. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, what time is it? Blessing time. Amen. The ushers are coming and getting the baskets and uh, they're going to bring the offering basket around to you. And Hannah's going to say, it's good to have Hannah here today, off of work. I asked, asked her what she got here, if she was, how she got off work. She said, I never, I just, I just came to church. <laughs>
all. Thank you, Sister Hannah. Hannah Deshna. Bless her heart. Amen. Is this the only basket there is? I thought we had two of them out there. Did y'all put it in here or you got another basket? There's two more baskets. Two more baskets out there. Hey, Amen. Everybody look around. If you see an usher running for his car with a basket. <laughs> no. Is there another one or we just got two of them? There's three. There's three. Somewhere there's another one. Frank's got the other one. He's Where's Frank? On, that side. on your left. Oh, he's coming up this way. Hey, Amen. Here, Jim. Put all this in one basket for me. Amen. All right. Well, you asked for it nearly put overflowing. There you go. <laughs> Just about. Amen. Looking good. Praise the Lord. We had our leadership meeting Friday, and we were going over all, planning all of this, and who's going to do what, and, and we got to this offering, how are we going to do this? So I told them we're going to, we're going to pass the basket around to the cars. And I told Jim, and don't bring it back till it's full. <laughs> oh man, I know you've been saving all for two months for this offering. Praise the Lord, you know what to do. One hand toward your offering, one hand toward heaven. We're going to release our faith together and God is getting ready to uh, pro fulfill his word to pour out a blessing on us. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, as the pastor of this congregation, standing in the privilege of the authority of the office, Lord, it's my honor to receive the tithe of the people, the worship of, of the people, your people, and receive the tenth that is the Lord's. And Father, you said here, pastors receive it here, but God is receiving it right now at the throne of God in heaven. So Father, we offer you our tithes and our offerings today. This is our gratitude. This is our thanks for that you've blessed us. And we thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, and you said when we bring our tithes into the house of God, God will open the window of heaven and pour out a blessing on us more than we can contain. So, Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus to release that promise on your people. Lord, if we have brought our tithes, we are worshiping you with our tithes. Now, Father God, we claim the promise that that window of heaven is open and you're pouring out a blessing on us that's more, more, more than we can contain. So, Father, we receive that more blessing in the name of Jesus and, Father, well, you said it's more than we know what to do. So, Father, thank you for raises. Thank you for me jobs coming back. Thank you, Lord, for the employment that's still there. Lord, your people are blessed in the name of Jesus more than we can contain. Raises, new jobs, better jobs, promotions. In the name of Jesus, thank you for the shield of faith that's around our incomes and that we have divine protection. In Jesus' name, everybody say it. Hey, Amen. Hey, well, did you enjoy this today? Did you hear that? Uh, all right. We will be here again next Sunday. I think we're going to change things up a little bit. I think we're going to put this trailer over there uh, in the shade and uh, try it that way. You're going to have to park this way next time, but we'll work it out. But you know, we're just checking, moving out and improving where we can. And so most of all, we are so glad you got out of your house and came here this morning. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Have a good week and stay happy.